Hi, thanks for watching this brief video where I'm going to cover some of the features of Nutanix files, but I want to focus more specifically on some of the antivirus and ransomware protection capabilities within the platform. So I just want to first of all start within the management console and just give you an overview of the infrastructure elements that I've already set up as part of this demonstration. So I'm going to start by showing you the virtual machines that I have running. I've already pre-installed a virtual machine with Windows 2019 and within that VM I have installed Trend Micro Server Protect, um, which is acting as the ICAP server. So that will be used to monitor and protect the Nutanix files estate. Now I'll drop back into this later in the demo, but for the moment I want to show you some more about the Nutanix files elements that we've got set up. So if I drop straight into the file server, and from there, um, I have a number of different options, but for the moment, I'm just going to launch the files console. Now, the files console is typically used to create file servers, to create additional shares. It will present you initially with the, with the dashboard, so you'll be able to see what the capacity and the performance summary is. Um, there's also an option to launch the file analytics, but I will come on to that later in the demo. But for the moment, as you can see on the left hand side, we have a number of different options under the menu. So again, starting from the dashboard, but then we can go down into the monitoring side. So again, usage performance um, and also the antivirus aspect. And you can see there I've got the ICAP server, which is just the one for this demonstration purposes. And then we've got reports, quarantine files and unquarantined files. Again, I'll pop back into that in a moment. Um, we've also got the number of shares in there. Again, this demo, I've only created the one share. It's possibly worth a quick note that if you pop along to the Nutanix support portal, you'll be able to see the link to the configuration maximums. And from there, you'll be able to see all of the details and all the configuration maximums relating to Nutanix files in terms of the number of shares, the number of file server VMs that you can have in the estate and, and a number of other metrics. Um, we can also expand date management, so we've got elements of protection and smart tiering. But if I just drop into configuration and then antivirus, I've all I've simply done is I've added in the IP address of that ICAP VM that I created earlier. Um, when you add a new ICAP server, it allows you to test that connectivity, hence it's got the green tick and the OK. You've got optional settings here for scanning, so scanning on write and scanning on read. Um, you can put optional file extensions to be excluded. Um, and then we've got some optional, again, some more advanced settings down below. So if we now leave this, and if I just pop back up into monitoring, you can, and then antivirus, you can actually see, if I scroll back up, the quarantine files there. And at the moment, there are no quarantine files. You can also show this under the specific shares. So if you go into the shares, and now I have a, an SMB share called share one, and then within there, antivirus, and then you can again see some quarantine files. I don't have anything there. So at the moment, I'm all clean. Um, I do have some uh, some events from some testing that I've done earlier, but at the moment these are not live. So at the moment I've got nothing quarantined. So now if I just very if I just jump back into the trend micro VM, I'll just launch that console again. And what I've done, I've used a, um, a standard text file that I'll be using um, to imitate 
a virus or a virus infected file. So this is just a, a standard dummy test file that is available um, from the public domain. So if I just copied that little bit of syntax there and if I go into my share, so this is the share here, and if I create a new text document, I'll call it icar.text. If I open that, I'll paste that in there, save that. And this is from iCar, so if I just show you quickly, if you're not familiar, so if you do a iCar.org, this is just available on the public domain, um, but you can download and test files um, for a number of different sort of malware. It's available in the public domain, and you can use that to test any kind of implementation. Um, I've added in that text file, so if I just rename that to .com, I'm going to change the file extension. So there we have it there. Now, I've done that, and now I'm going to drop into the files, and straight away I've landed in the quarantines and almost immediately it's picked up that as a quarantined file so it's determined that it is a virus and has quarantined it accordingly now we have a number of different actions we on there if i select that button actions i can rescan it i can unquarantine it or i can delete it for this particular demo i'm simply going to delete that file and again, if I now drop back into the um, the launch console, there we are, and then go back into that shared file, it's been deleted, it's been removed. Now, what I want to also show you, if I drop back into the Nutanix files aspect and then just go uh, back in and then go back to the dashboard, I want to take the time just to show you some of the ransomware elements as well. Now, um, I'm going to be using a file analytics, uh, which is an on-premises virtual machine that week that you have the option to deploy as part of Nutanix files. Um, you also have the option of investigating and looking at data lens, which has some additional benefits. It has some additional bells and whistles and features. Um, that is subscribed to as part of an as a service offering from Nutanix. Um, but for this demo, I'm not intending to cover data lens. But if, if you wish, just drop me a note and we'll be able to go through that as well. Now, I've opened up Files Analytics and again, it's a dashboard feel. And this is where you can find out who did what, why and when. So I've got capacity trend analysis, permission denials, and the typical file types, top five access files, active users and so on. Now, from here, if we hit the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner, we can go to some ransomware options there. We also have anomalies there. So all of these features you can use to protect your platform. So anomalies may be where um, you suddenly have a vast number of files being generated or created at the same time which could be indicative of, of, of a malware attack of some description. But back to this demo, so I've dropped into the ransomware and you can see during my some of my earlier testing, we've got some recent attempts there already where I've um, blocked file rename. Um, but if we go into the settings, let me show you the settings. So at the moment, um, we're using a 
blocked file signatures of 250, or actually it's 249, I'll come on to the extra one in a moment, so 241 of the most common ransomware file signatures, but that can be updated on a regular basis, and you can also add in your own file signatures. Now, as part of this exercise, I've already added in my initials as a, a blocked file signature, so KM, so I've added in so if I just do a start.km and then do a search, it searches against that CSV file and the signature is available already in the block list. You can add additional signatures and you can remove signatures from the block list as appropriate. You do have the option of obviously disable the ransomware protection from here as well and also um, email recipients. So every time there is a suspect attack, if you like, um, it will be, it'll notify you um, straight away. So if I just cancel that, close that down, I'm now going to go back into the trend micro VM that I have running. So this, this particular component's not using the trend, um, as such, but what I wanted to demonstrate, if I go back into the share, there we are. Um, what I want to do is I've got a, a new text document there. It's just empty, but what I want to simply do is if that, if I rename that to .km, which is one of the blocked extensions, if I try and rename that there, it's going to come up with a file access denied because that is a known block. So it's not going to allow me by default. And if I cancel that and then because I've done that is a test action within, if I just drop very quickly again, back into the file analytics and the ransomware, if I refresh the page, it may not show up immediately. It may take a couple of moments but it will come up as, a, as, a, as, as another target attempt. If I view all attempts, let's see if it's going to come up again. But in a moment, it'll show up there as a, as a, a blocked file type, um, a potential vulnerability that you can monitor. And that's it, that's all I wanted to cover as part of this video today. Again, thank you for watching. Um, any comments, please let me know. Um, thank you very much. Cheers now. Bye.